once again, last week, we had chaos and controversy. We had upsets and controversial officiating in multiple games last week. What does week eight have in store for us? Johnny Sports Network here to provide you with my week eight NFL predictions. And I am looking to bounce back after an abysmal week seven. As I went six and seven in my picks last week, my worst week of the season so far, I'm looking to bounce back. Without further ado, let's get right into the week eight predictions. As always, we begin with Thursday night football. This week for Thursday night, Buccaneers and Bills. And if I'm the Buccaneers, this is the best time in the season to play the Bills. The Bills in the last three weeks, they have had a difficult time getting things going. They lose to the Jaguars in London. They just escaped the Giants in a game that had a very controversial ending. Last week, they can't get the ball moving against the Patriots in the first half, but they showed signs of life in the second half, but they surrendered the win in the waning seconds of that matchup. The Bills have got to get going at some point. And I think the Buccaneers have the intangibles to pull off this upset. But I just can't see it happening. As underrated as I have talked about the Buccaneers being all season long, I just think the Bills have got to get going eventually. The Bills have got to start looking like one of the dominant teams in the league that we've seen the Bills in these last handful of years. I really do think Tampa Bay can at least cover the eight and a half, which that is what the current spread is for this matchup. I think the Bills win. But ideally, I think this game is going to be a Buccaneers cover, which, by the way, all these picks are straight up picks, but I will give the lines out for some of the matchups that do stick out to me this week. And this is kind of one of them. But Buffalo wins, but I think Tampa is going to cover the eight and a half. With the way the Bills have been playing lately, I don't know if I can pick them to cover in a game until I start to see the Bills get back to being one of those dominant teams in the NFL. Rams and Cowboys. The Rams are coming off of a loss to the Steelers in a game that ended in controversy. Steelers-Rams was one of the games last week that had controversial officiating. It looked like the Rams had Kenny Pickett stopped on fourth and inches with the Rams having a chance to tie the game up or even win it. But they gave Kenny Pickett the first down and the Rams didn't have any timeouts to challenge the play. And the Steelers, they were able to run the clock out. And now they go on the road against the Cowboys to take on a Cowboys team that I think is very confident despite what happened to them in San Francisco a couple of weeks ago, where they got embarrassed in prime time. But I think the bye week could not come any at a better time for the Cowboys than this past week. Leading up into that, they beat the Chargers on the road on Monday Night Football in a game that required them to have to grind for all 60 minutes. The defense stepped up and made a play when they needed to, to seal the game up. Then they went right into their bye week. And now they're back home in Cowboys Stadium. And I think that is a recipe for a Cowboys victory. Now, last season, when these two teams faced off against each other, the Cowboys won by a score of 22 to 10. Now, I personally would be surprised if we had another game like that between these two teams this season, as I think the Rams have the intangibles to make this a game, to make this a high scoring game. But I'm going to pick the Cowboys to win at the end of the day. I think it just comes down to the Cowboys being more confident right now than the Rams, because the Rams, they realized they had a game last week that they probably could have had, maybe should have had, 
and I'm just picking the more confident team. Vikings and Packers in Lambeau. And people aren't going to like this one. But I have the Packers pulling off the upset against the Vikings. Now, the Vikings are in a two-game winning streak after the slow start to the season. They did beat the 49ers at home last week on Monday night. An emotional victory over the 49ers. The defense made two interceptions late in that game to seal the win for the Vikings. Jordan Addison had a breakout game for the Vikings. But this is a short week, and they have to go on the road. Less rest, less time to prepare. Jordan Love has struggled in the last few weeks. But I do think it's only a matter of time until Jordan Love gets back into the groove of things. The Packers, they have a very positive history against the Vikings in Lambeau. And I think with the Vikings coming off of a short week, an emotional victory, the Packers' defense, they did everything they needed to do to win that game against the Broncos. But Jordan Love couldn't deliver at the end. The last two weeks, well, two games the Packers have played, their defense did just about everything they could, but Jordan Love couldn't deliver. But I think this week Jordan Love redeems himself and he leads the Packers to the upset win over the Vikings. Plus, Aaron Jones is back into the fold in the Packers running game. And I do think that is a boost for the Packers moving forward. And I think the Packers, they get back on the winning track this week. Falcons and Titans. And I'm going to be honest, I am nervous about this pick. I am picking the Falcons to win this game. And the reason why I'm nervous about it, every single time I buy into the Falcons, they let me down and they embarrass me. B. John Robinson was out on the field for about, I believe it was eight snaps last week. As it was reported, he wasn't feeling well. He ended up having a headache. The Falcons are currently being investigated by the NFL. They're asking for an explanation on why he wasn't listed on the injury report. But the Falcons defense, they, they're, I believe, third or fourth in the league in total defense, which is not something I expected to see at this point in the year, even with the acquisitions they made on the defensive side of the ball in the offseason. But they go on the road to take on a Titans team that, I don't know if I can trust them. I don't know what to think about the Titans. Which Titans team is going to show up in this game? Will it be the Titans team that couldn't get the ball moving at all against the Browns? Or will it be the Titans team that dominated against the Bengals? We don't know the quarterback is for this matchup yet, whether it's Malik Willis or Will Levis. But I'm picking the Falcons, and I do think Bijan Robinson, he bounces back with a solid performance for the Falcons. But the question is, there are rumors that Derrick Henry is on the trade block, and the Titans are looking to maybe deal Derrick Henry to get some draft capita. So I am wondering, will they limit Derrick Henry in this game? Because I believe the trade deadline is... In about a week or two. So if Derrick Henry gets limited action this game, I do think it is a hint that the Titans will be moving on from King Henry. Saints and Colts, both teams coming off of heartbreaking losses last week. The Saints to the Jaguars on Thursday night. The Colts, a loss to the Browns in the game that had the most controversy out of all the games this week. The Saints had the opportunity to tie the game up and send it to overtime, but the touchdown to Foster Moreau went right through his fingertips. And the Colts, well, there is no doubt that the Colts, they did get hindered by the officiating. Although this kind of does feel like 
a random game just to have the officials dictate what happens. Now, I'm not somebody that necessarily thinks the NFL is rigged or there are agendas to it. I mean, to an extent, I could understand if there are desired outcomes, but I don't know why they'd want to mess with Browns and Colts out of all games. So that is kind of puzzling to me. But both of these teams are looking to get back on the winning side of things after last week's heartbreaks. But I am going to pick the Saints. Being the more rested team, if you've been following along all season, I tend to pick the teams that played on Thursday night, the recent week, due to the rest factor. And also, I am going to predict that Foster Moreau is going to score a touchdown in this game to get the redemption from last week. I think that Derek Carr is well enough of a leader to make sure that happens. I'm going to pick the Saints to win this one. I also think Alvin Kamara has a good day as well. Alvin Kamara has been phenomenal since he's gotten back involved in the Saints offense. And I think once again, he's in for a big performance. Also, Jonathan Taylor's getting back into the thick of things for the Colts in their offense. So I do think we're going to see quite a bit of points in this game, believe it or not, as both of these teams underrated offenses with lots of playmakers. I will acknowledge that Chris Olave did get placed under arrest on Monday night. So that could be a distraction looming for the Saints, but I think they will take care of business this week. And I think Derek Carr is at least well enough of a leader to overcome these distractions. Patriots and Dolphins. And this is another game this week where the line really sticks out to me. Right now it's currently set at Miami minus nine and a half. And the reason why it does is because we saw these two teams face off in week two, where the Patriots, they held their own against the high octane Dolphins offense. And I'm thinking of why they would put Miami as a nine and a half point favorite with how week two went down. Well, because the Patriots, they look a little different than in week two. As the Patriots, they have injuries on their defense. The Patriots are also coming off of an emotional victory over the Bills, winning in the waning seconds. And the Patriots' negative history against the Dolphins in Miami. So basically, if you are picking the Dolphins to cover, you are needing them to win by 10. I don't know personally if that's a game that you want to touch as far as covering. But I do think the Dolphins win. But the Patriots, they held their own against a high-octane Bills offense. So maybe there is some exhaustion from having a tough battle against a high-octane offense. Now you're facing another one in the Dolphins. That could make sense. But I do think the Dolphins win this game based off of that. But we've seen in the last couple of weeks, any given Sunday, I'm still picking the Dolphins, but I would not be completely shocked if the Patriots pulled off another upset. I just can't see this one happening personally. Next up, we have the New York Jets and the New York Giants. And I feel like this game is pretty simple to me to an extent. Now, despite the Jets record, we have seen the Jets hold their own against the strongest quarterbacks in the NFL. The Jets are coming off of their bye week. Before that, they took down the Eagles to end their unbeaten season. And now they get the Giants coming off of a defensive battle in a 14-7 slugfest against the Commanders. Saquon Barkley has been back for a couple of weeks for the Giants. But I just like that Jets defense. It's one of the better defenses in the NFL. They've held their own against opposing quarterbacks. The best quarterbacks in the league, they've held their own. They've embarrassed them. And Tyrod Taylor, 
I feel like should be the Giants quarterback for the rest of the way. They probably won't start Tyrod Taylor after Daniel Jones starts to feel better because of the emotional investment and attachment they have to him, giving him that contract extension in the offseason. I'm going to pick the Jets because the Jets, despite the slow start to the year, they've held their own against some of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And their defense is one of the best in the league. More confident team coming off the bye week. I think it's a recipe for a Jets win. Jaguars and Steelers. Now, there was a comment last week about how it's funny how I say Jaguars. But I'm going to have to go back and listen to kind of see where this person's coming from. I don't remember who said it. I'll have to go back and look. And I really feel bad that I didn't write this down in advance. I actually didn't write anything down this week because of how bad the picks were last week because I was probably overanalyzing and overthinking things. Despite the Steelers having a confidence-boosting win over the Rams, a game that they won in controversy, they're up against a Jaguars team that is a lot more confident. Plus, they're the well-rested team played on Thursday night. For those of you that have been tuning in all season long, you know where I'm going with this. You know what's about to go down. And we are starting to see shades of last season's Jaguars team that got off to a slow start. But the further along the season went, the better the Jaguars became. And I'm going to pick the Jaguars to win this week on the road. Although Najee Harris, I think he is more confident now that he has his first touchdown of the year. Deontay Johnson came back for the Steelers last week. And I will be honest, I was tempted to go the other way in this matchup. But I can't really go against my own theory and my own strategy of picking the Thursday night teams from the week prior. Although sometimes I will go against my Thursday night theory, but in this instance, I'm not going to, because I just think the Jaguars, they're getting confident week after week. Next matchup, the Eagles and the Commanders. And this one is pretty interesting. The Commanders, they seem to always, at least more often than not, give the Eagles their best shot. The Commanders look like a completely different team when they play the Eagles. We saw them end the Eagles' undefeated season last year, handing them their first loss of the year last season. We also saw them compete against the Eagles really well earlier in the season on the road. They forced overtime, although Ron Rivera came out and said he was tempted to have them go for two instead of taking their chances in overtime but he felt like the offense was exhausted after the long drive to score the touchdown. Now, I am going to pick the Eagles to win this matchup, even though I feel like I probably am walking myself into a trap because, as I have mentioned, the Commanders, they look like a completely different team against this Eagles team. But I will say, the Eagles' pass rush, I think, is going to have their way with Sam Howell in this game. And I think I read somewhere that Sam Howell has been sacked 40 times already this season. I do not think there has been a quarterback that has taken more harassment than Sam Howell. And Sam Howell, he has still put up some pretty solid numbers despite facing constant harassment from the pass rush. So he has really, you got to give him credit though, being sacked 40 times this season in the first seven games of the year, mad props to him for keeping his composure and still putting up some decent numbers. But I just think the Eagles are fired up after last week, the confidence boosting win over the Dolphins, containing a high octane Dolphins offense. I just think this Eagles defense will have their way with Sam Howell this week. Texans and Panthers, 
both teams coming off of their bye week. The Texans are having an under-the-radar type of season, and they are doing a lot better than anticipated. I still think they are a couple of years away from getting to that next step, but that could be earlier than anticipated if they keep playing the way that they're playing. The Panthers, they are looking for their first win of the season, and they have had some valiant efforts so far this season. Week two against the Saints on Monday Night Football. They held their own, but they just couldn't get it done. The next week against the Seahawks with Andy Dalton under center, they looked like a much better team. Then the next week against the Vikings, they couldn't get it done. They have a 14-0 lead against the Dolphins early, but then the Dolphins, they outscored the Panthers 42-7 after that. And it was off of a Mike White pick six. So after the 14-0 lead against the Dolphins, they could not get anything else going offensively after that. But Frank Reich has surrendered the play calling, and I do think that is going to be a new burst of energy for the Panthers. And I think the Panthers get their first win of the season. As they have been close a couple of times this season, we have seen moments where the Panthers, that they were capable of winning games, but they just haven't been able to get it done. But I think this Sunday, they finally get it done and the Panthers win their first game of the year. As they have a relatively favorable schedule coming up, this week against the Texans, then another ideal opportunity to get their first win if they can't win this week against the Colts. And then November the 9th against the Bears, that could be their next opportunity to win a game after that. And then possibly the Titans on November 26th. And I think that might be their last opportunity to win a game this season. But the Panthers, they they looked like a much better team last season after they traded Christian McCaffrey. After that happened, the Panthers, they were able to win a couple of games. And I think that might be the case now with Frank Reich surrendering the offensive play calling. Browns and Seahawks. And I'll be honest, I had a difficult time deciding who to pick in this game. As the Browns are coming off of two big wins in a row against the 49ers and the Colts in what was arguably the controversial game of the week, they go on the road against Seattle where the Browns have the best defense from a stat standpoint in the league. They take on a Seahawks team that defensively, I do think, is pretty inconsistent at times. But we have seen the Seahawks defense have good performances. DK Metcalf didn't play for the Seahawks last week with a ribs injury, which I felt kind of confused by that. Actually, excuse me, never mind. It was a hip injury. A hip injury he did not play last week. He had been dealing with a ribs injury since week two against the Lions. I do think, however, if DK Metcalf doesn't play in this game, I think he's potentially going to be a guy that could get traded at the trade deadline. As DK Metcalf in the past has voiced that he's been unhappy in Seattle. And I do think it adds up to why they drafted Jackson Smith and Jigba in the first round. I get that Tyler Lockett's getting older, but you also need to have a dependable number one wide receiver. And with Tyler Lockett getting older, DK Metcalf being unhappy, you need to have a number one option in your offense. I do think the Seahawks win this game, although I went back and forth on this because the Browns' defense is the best defense from a stat standpoint in the league. But I'm going to pick the Seahawks, as I feel like the Browns, with them coming off of the two emotional wins back-to-back, one of them being in controversy, I just think that this is going to be a win for the Seahawks. I'm not sure if it's going to be a back-and-forth kind of game or if both defenses hold their own in this. Either way, I think the Seahawks win.
Chiefs and Broncos. There is no word yet if there will be any special guests at this game. Last week on National Tight Ends Day, Travis Kelsey had a feast. 12 catches, 179 yards, and a touchdown. And these two squared off on Thursday Night Football a couple of weeks ago, where Travis Kelsey had nine catches, 124 yards. He didn't have a touchdown in that game, but he was still a difference maker in that game. Now, this spread of minus seven and a half in favor of the Chiefs, it sticks out a little bit because a couple weeks ago, the line was minus ten and a half. And the Broncos, they had the intangibles to cover in that game. But it was Sean Payton's really bad coaching decisions to punt on fourth down after calling a timeout. And they let the Chiefs just kick a 60-plus yard field goal going into the half, which that was a three-point swing against the Broncos right there. I do think the Broncos' defense may be able to hold their own in this game like they did a couple weeks ago. Russell Wilson has had a solid season, which I don't think it's talked about as much compared to other quarterbacks having good seasons so far, mainly because of how bad the Broncos' defense is and what the Broncos' record is. I think the Chiefs win this game, though, but at least more often than not recently, we've seen the Broncos hold their own against the Chiefs. I still think Chiefs win this game, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Broncos covered the 7.5. I, I really wouldn't. But the Chiefs' defense has been underrated throughout the year, and I don't think people talk about that. As the Chiefs' defense, it's been talked about as being inconsistent over the years, but this year, they're off to a good start. Ravens and Cardinals. The Ravens picked up a dominant win over the Lions last week. And now they go on the road to take on a Cardinals team that has shown some valiant effort in the first few weeks of the year. But they just can't seem to win games. And I think this week will be no different. I do think the Cardinals, they might be able to pull out some stops early in the game. But I just think the Ravens will get better as the game goes along. The Ravens coming off of that dominant win. Huge confidence booster to take down a strong team in the Lions the way that they did. I think it translates into another big-time Ravens win. I think they win in dominant fashion, but I think the Cardinals, I think they'll keep it close in the beginning, but the Ravens will pull away as the game progresses. Bengals and 49ers. And this may be a hot take here, but I think this is a must-win for the 49ers. A must win for the 49ers if they're going to have a chance at getting the number one overall seed in the NFC. We have seen over the years how critical having home field advantage throughout the playoffs can be. And I don't think the Eagles are going to lose that many games throughout the rest of the year. So if the 49ers, if they want to have a shot at the number one seed in the NFC, They've got to win this week. I don't think they can fall any further behind the Eagles for the battle for the number one seed in the NFC. Because even though the 49ers are on a two-game losing streak, I think the Eagles and 49ers are the two best teams in the NFC. And they take on a Bengals team that I don't know what to think about them at this point, and I think a lot of people don't know either. But we've seen the last couple of seasons... The Bengals get off to slow starts, but they get better as the season goes along. But they run into a 49ers team that is the second best team in the NFC, in my opinion. Despite them having two losses on the year back to back, I think the 49ers being back at home as they've been on the road the last two weeks, I think they get the sour taste of defeat out of their mouths. And they pick up this win. Bears and Chargers. The Bears are coming off of a dominant win against the Raiders last week. Donta Foreman, three total touchdowns in that game. Tyson Bajant, 
won his first NFL game as a starter. And now the Bears go on the road to take on the Chargers. And the Chargers, they have been... It's been the same story for quite some time. They will have a chance to win a game at the very end. And more often than not, they won't. They will lose that game. They'll find a way to lose the game. And the Chargers, they are not good in one possession games. More often than not, they will lose. But I think the Chargers, they get a much needed win after last week against the Chiefs where Justin Herbert did not have the best game by any means. But I think he bounces back this week. I think Austin Eckler bounces back this week, as Austin Eckler has not produced as much as we're used to seeing, but he has been coming back from an ankle injury. I think this is the week Austin Eckler finally gets things going against the Bears. I think the Chargers, they win this game big. Week 8 wraps up with Monday Night Football, Raiders and Lions. And I think this game comes down to one simple thing. With this being a battle between two teams that need to get back on the winning track. After bad losses last week, the Raiders to the Bears, the Lions to the Ravens. The one thing it comes down to for me in this game is coaching. There is no doubt. And I'm sure even Raiders fans would say this. Dan Campbell is the much better coach in this matchup. There are Raiders fans that want Josh McDaniels fired. They want Mark Davis to be smart and fire Josh McDaniels. It's that bad right now for the Raiders organization. Dan Campbell is the coach I think is more likely to get his team re-energized after losing the way that they did in the week prior. Forget about the players in this game. Forget about the quarterbacks, the running backs, the stats and the numbers. It just comes down to coaching, in my opinion, this game. And I'm going with the better coach in this matchup, and that is Dan Campbell. And I'm picking the Lions to win this game on Monday night. And that will do it for my Week 8 NFL predictions. Comment your picks down below. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, and enjoy the football this weekend.